I think I have a message to share with somebody out there. Not really sure who, but if this message touches your heart, then it's probably for you. I was given this message sometime before three o'clock this morning. I actually didn't look at the clock until exactly 2.56, but so I'm not sure if that's important. The thing is, this is May the 30th, 2020. So I thought that was extremely significant. Now, the thing about the message that I heard is coming out of the third testament of the Bible. Now, when I went to bed last night, I went to bed listening to the third testament of the Bible. I have it on MP3 and my tablet, and I had it on shuffle going through the chapters when I went to sleep. I had the volume down pretty low. I could barely even hear it because my, my wife has a hard time sleeping with scripture playing. I think it's because she's trying to listen to it instead of trying to sleep or whatever. But the thing about it, I was awakened and the volume seemed extremely high. And so I started to listen. Now, later on, after I gotten the message that I believed that I was supposed to get, I kept trying to listen, but it's like the volume had dropped back down and I really couldn't hear the rest of the chapter. It's like the father woke me up just to hear these few verses that I'm about to share with you. I couldn't hear the verses that came before it and I couldn't hear the verses that came behind it. I woke up and I told my wife about it this morning. I went and found it in the paperback book that I have on the Third Testament and read it to her. It made sense to me that I would be getting such a message on May the 30th. But before I went back to sleep, I changed the tablet to repeat to keep repeating that chapter over and over again. And then I went back to sleep. Then, before I got out of the bed this morning, even before I started saying my prayers this morning, I was once again woken up at the exact same verse. The exact, almost the exact same way. I was woken up as if the volume on the tablet had gotten louder right at the beginning of that verse and as I went on and tried to listen to the rest of the chapter I couldn't really hear it it's like secondary confirmation that that was the verse that he wanted me to hear here on May the 30th 2020 so let's get into the verse that I'm talking about. I'm not sure exactly what section is coming out of. I'll find that out in a second. But it's coming out of chapter 22 of the Third Testament of the Bible. Chapter 22 is called The Love, Assistance, and Grace of God. And you can see the different sections that are listed here in that chapter. You can find links to the third testament of the Bible in a description of this video, both an audio book and a PDF version that you can download to your computer. Looks like the verses coming out of chapter 22 that contains the message that I was given is in a part of the chapter called the help and protection of God. Like I said, I'm not sure who this message is for. It may just be for me, but if it's for you, these verses will probably touch your heart. 
If I don't remember to say so at the end of the video, please go ahead and subscribe and or hit that bell button so you can see future videos that we'll put out. And go ahead and hit that like button. It's easier to remember to do it now than it is to remember to do it later. And if you would, please leave comments along the way. You really support our channel by doing those things. But anyway, let's jump into it. Look in here at verse 24. You are going to begin a new phase in your life. The path has been prepared. Take up your cross and follow me. I have not told you that there would be no trials on this path. However, you will hear a voice that offers you inspiration and advice when you confront an ordeal or drain a cup of bitterness. My love will help you to arise whenever you fall, and you will feel the gentle caress of my balsam. This is what humanity is expecting to go through. They call it the Great Awakening. You can read about this new phase in our life that we are preparing to go through when you read the last chapter in the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 12. Daniel chapter 12 is one of the books that talks about the Great Awakening. You can hear about this event in other books like 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and 1 Corinthians chapter 15. It talks about this change that humanity is expecting to go through. We've done many classes on the Great Awakening, and we've even gone on to do classes from the book of Daniel, chapter 12, verse 11 through 13, that tells us when this Great Awakening is to take place. But you can find those videos over on our channel. I'll probably link to them at the end of this video. I don't want to make this video too long, so I'm not going to get into the greater details. But looking back over here at the third testament of the Bible, look how he's saying that we're going to begin a new phase in our lives. He says the path has been prepared. We're talking about the mystery of the great awakening. If you look at one of the definitions given for the word rapture, it says a mystical experience in which the spirit is exalted to a knowledge of divine things. That's why they call it a mystery. Our father has been preparing humanity for this transition since the beginning of time. Just given a short little story of what happened back there in the Garden of Eden, we as humans was created in the image of God meaning that we were spiritualized individuals. That's why Adam was able to talk with the father in the garden as if he was talking to another person is because he was spiritualized. He had that spirit to spirit communication. But when he and Eve made the covenant with Satan by choosing to eat of the tree of knowledge, they broke that spiritualization bond between them and the father and we were reduced to the state that we're in now where we don't really understand our spiritual nature. Well, the Father has been preparing us to return to that spiritualized state where we will once again be like we were in the Garden of Eden and being able to communicate with Him directly. That's why we were given books of Moses and the law in order to teach us to live like we were supposed to live so that we can become conscious beings again and become spiritualized beings again. That's why the Messiah gave us baptism in order to purify us of our previous sins so that we could remove those stains off of our spirit and once again hear our consciences which is how we actually hear from the Father himself. This path has been prepared. For a long time then he goes on to say take up your cross and follow me understanding what he means by cross here this is what we're having to go through I can see now I'm gonna keep pointing to previous classes that we've done on our channel so I might as well go ahead and lean into it we've done plenty of classes on what the cross means what it means to bear our cross 
Whenever we do classes on humility, whenever we do classes on how we will be humbled, whenever we do classes on how we will be purified by pain, how we will suffer misery, I'm trying to remember them off of the top of my head, but these are all classes on what it means to bear our cross. We have to bear our cross. And this is what he's telling us to do. If you don't get to see any of those classes, just understand that what it's talking about is when bad things happen to you, don't complain. Don't try to fight back. Praise the Father through all of your hardships. That's what it means to bear your cross the same way the Messiah did when he had that wooden cross that he was carrying as people was beating him and spitting on him and stuff. He didn't retaliate. He didn't cry out and curse the people. He even blessed the people and prayed for them. That's what it means to bear the cross. He says right here, I have not told you that there would be no trials on this path. There are going to be trials on this path. We did classes on reincarnation. I think it was called reincarnation versus resurrection where we learned that we are reincarnated spirits. We have our fleshly bodies, sure. Those we have been aware of and familiar with all of our lives. But we also have a spirit being inside of us. This spirit being is going to live forever even after our bodies have been gone back to the dust or turned into ashes. This is part of the new phase of our lives is we're going to come in contact with our spiritual nature and start to understand who we really are. The thing about it, we've lived past lives. In those past lives, we've done things wrong. Well, we have to make up for that. That's why bad things happen to good people. Those bad things are helping us to remove the stains that we've done in the past. We've done classes on this. So let's go on. Now here's where it gets deep. He says, however, you will hear a voice that offers you inspiration and advice when you confront an ordeal or drain a cup of bitterness. Now that may not sound significant, but this is one of the main parts of the change that humanity is about to go through. This voice that he's talking about is our conscious. Right now, we can't really hear our conscious. I mean, that small, still voice is there, but we have to get really, really quiet in order to hear it. And even for the ones of us who are the most prepared, it is still very hard to hear. But that's going to change. There's coming a time when that voice is going to get loud, very loud, overwhelmingly loud. Our conscience reminding us of the difference between right and wrong. This is what Daniel was talking about in chapter 12 and verse 2 when he said, The sum will awake to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. But look what it will also do. It says it will offer us inspiration and advice when we confront an ordeal or drain a cup of bitterness. Meaning that when we find ourselves in trials going forward, after this change, we're going to have that voice there to help us, there to guide us. This, I believe, is what the scripture means when it says we're going to be led by angels, spiritual beings, our consciousness. The verse goes on to say, my love will help you to arise whenever you fall and you will feel the gentle caress of my balm. That's talking about healing. That's one of the other things that we are expecting to go through in this change is that our bodies will be healed. Now, I am yet to do a class on Malachi chapter 4, which talks in greater detail about Elijah. We see down here, 
in verse 5. This is the last chapter from the Old Testament. It too is pointing to the change that humanity is going through. But you look up here at verse 2, it talks about the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. Part of this change that we'll go through is our bodies will be healed. And many of the ailments that we suffer from nowadays are going to go away. So that I believe is the message that the father was given to me. The message that he has given to us. So I hope you got something out of this. If you did, hit the like button and leave us a comment. And be sure to check out some of these videos that are coming as links in the end of this video. May our Father bless you and keep you. May our Father make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May our Father lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.